Hi everyone, I have been gifted this, um, sorry for the light, there we go, um, a very pretty um, Matchstick Mouse book. This is the newest um, book, it's not been out that long, maybe a week or so, um, by Morgan O'Brien and uh, I thought I would do a flip through, I haven't actually looked through it yet, um, I have seen a quick flip through, uh, someone else did, but I thought I would look through it properly with you and then we would colour a page from the book. Um, sorry about my um, lamp glare, it's really sunny. I've had to close my blind and put the lamp on. There we go, there you can see it without the lamp glare. So it's really pretty um, design on the front and this will probably be inside somewhere. I like the background here too, a mix of different colours, it's nice. So we have our This Book Belongs To page. We always have um, this one. I may not move the book across actually. I'll just show you this one. So you can just see this is just the um, copyright page and the title page. Um, you could of course colour this one. I've never coloured this one. And then when we move into the book, um, the back of every page just has this on. So it means that it is effectively single sided. So you can um, so you can use your markers, um, your oil based markers and things like that. I've, tr I've used watercolour in the books and although the page has gone crinkled and it went through the paper, it didn't matter. I just always use a laminated sheet behind if I'm going to use wet media, just to protect the page behind. But uh, here's our first one with a very pretty dandelion. Now, of course dandelions are always quite difficult because they're white. So for that, for me, I would do a um actually should we do this one we could do this one as our first page we'll color this one at the end and i'll show you i think that might be fun okay oh look at how cute she looks she's got a little flower skirt on that's so sweet and we've got palm tree things like that look at worm <laughs> that's lovely oh now this one i'm going to be coloring um probably later today because uh um, my friend wants to do a buddy colour on this page, so uh, look how chilled she looks, relaxing in her bath. Actually, if you come in a bit closer, you don't really need to see the uh, all the white page around, do you? There we go. Oh, so she's chilling, it's raining, um, she's got a cup of something, um, bis cookies, biscuits, and a lovely floral blanket that looks like a little crochet one to me. That's really cute. <clears throat> and look at that. So we've got really pretty roses there to colour. Those are lovely, really well drawn. So that'll be great fun. Whether you do them all the same or differently, you know, you could do them red like Valentine's. We've got a label. So she's obviously either just received them as a gift or is giving them as a gift. You could always write something on there, um, which would be fun. So that's a really lovely one. Oh, and she's just having a little sweep. We've got bits of dust and uh, a lovely pot of flowers. So I think in every picture we're going to see some florals, but I think they're all on a different theme, which is really good. So here we haven't got an obvious flower, but we have here, she's making some sort of floral tea, which is great fun. And we've got a see-through teapot. Not sure that is there. Maybe it's a bag containing whatever these, maybe it's chamomile. I probably do as chamomile. I don't know what colour chamomile is. Anyway, <laughs> have to find out. Now this one is sweet. We've got lots of different types of flowers, but we can identify them quite easily, which um, someone said actually in a comment, which I was I um, hadn't, didn't know because I hadn't looked through, but we can see this is a lily or an iris. They're always quite similar. We're sort of gerbera type daisies and roses. So that's really nice. Not so sure about those, but you could. it's nice to have something that you can just, you know, it might just be grass. I don't know, you can do what you like with that one, so that's fun. Now here, these to me look like daffodils, although that isn't a trumpet, is it? So maybe not. But anyway, they're very pretty, and um, Bat Friend is there, so that's fun. And they're eating, that Bat Friend is holding, I wonder what they're eating. I guess you can colour them any way you wish. Mm. Good fun. Ah, oh, and now she's on her broomstick, her matchstick broom. She's got a letter and a bunch of flowers and um, dung beetle there. That's really nice. Oh, and she's giving them to someone. Look, what do you think? Do you think that's mummy? Do you think that's mummy mouse? It's very sweet. And look at her face. Ooh, lovely. 
And this is the one from the front loop. So that's nice. Now I would be tempted to colour them all the same, but they're done differently on the cover and it looks really pretty. So, you know, that's opened my mind a little bit. Oh, I'm in a boat. There's quite a few boat ones in uh, Matchstick Mouse. It's rather fun colouring water. And we have these um, lotus flowers or, or lilies. Wow. Now we're having a cup of tea in a sort of floral tea room. I'm guessing, or outside, I don't know, but it's really very pretty. That's a fun one, a spider. Oh look, she's sewing, um, she's doing a sort of um, embroidery with flowers, and we've got the flowers around, that's really lovely. <laughs> How cute. So these are like your blue bells, I guess. I mean, you don't have to do them blue. And we've got all the little critters. It's really good fun. And, oh, she's picking a bunch of flowers. That's nice. I'm making a door wreath. That's really pretty. I do like colouring doors. I don't know why. And we have a window box as well. And uh, a nice little bush there. So that's really good fun. That's it'll be a lovely one to colour. And, oh, Worm is doing a little painting of the um, flowers. Although it looks a bit abstract. <laughs> Um, stag beetle's doing a better job. <laughs> Maybe worm has trouble controlling a paintbrush with the end of his tail. <laughs> oh, so we have owl and we have floral necklace and beaded necklace. And owl's got a really funky hat, a lovely scarf and a uh, sort of jacket on that's really nice. Oh, lovely tulips. And this looks like paper, as if it's sort of, but imagine getting a bunch of tulips and having it on that little cute mouse face. <laughs> so we're off for an explore. We've got our um, roller sleeping bag and, and uh, um, rucksack. And we've got some little florals. They look like um, shamrock or, to me, but um, that's okay. I might colour them as flowers just because it's a floral book. But we'll wait and see. Now here, these are... I can't work out what these are. Maybe carnations, I'm thinking. Maybe. Yeah, that's rather pretty. Oh, we have some snowdrops and a snow to colour as well. Now, a little worm's being held. Oh, it's too cold for worm. And we have a lovely daisy chain. But of course, you don't have to colour them white. I might have a go. I'm not very well practised in white, so maybe it would be a good idea. I don't know. I'll have a think when I get to that one. Ooh, so Mouse is icing a cake. Look at her little tongue. She's got some on her hat and her tail. She's making a right mess. But she's put these pretty flowers on, so that's a nice. And we've got some bunting as well, so that's fun. Ooh, and this looks like cherry blossom to me. It's rather pretty. And we have an apple tree. There's actually no florals on our apple tree, just apples, but that's okay. That's another fun one to do. And oh, look how sweet. Um, what do you think that is? Magnolia? Thinking. Now, owl is peeping out from behind some. Mm, I probably colour those as sunflowers, you know. Oh, and that looks more like a gerb or a daisy to me. Look at that fluffy bee. It's a very cute picture. So these are paper flowers, I think, which are being made into a garland. So you can just colour them any type, any colour. So I would probably do them sort of tissue papery colours, purples and pinks, maybe something like that. These look like peonies, I think. Oh, very sweet, very nice. And maybe a foxglove or a lupin. Not sure, but very just so nicely drawn. We've got a lot of clouds or bushes in the background. You could do it either way. I'm thinking clouds because of the birds. So that's interesting. Something a bit different to colour. And this one... Yeah. No, I'm not sure at all about what that is. But I'm feeling purples with a yellow middle. Don't know why. Oh, and that's the last one. We get a blank page, which can be quite useful for testing out pens. And it's a, got a blue back on, but a greeny coloured turquoisey spine, which is fun. So let's um, turn to the first page, which is 
the one I said I was going to have a go out with the dandelion. Now I've got my Castle Art Gold set out to uh, use. So let's do the, start with the grass and uh, work from there really. Um, what should we do? Let's go with a hooker's green for the base parts of the grass and then uh, and then move from there. So I'm going to do sort of fade it up the grass so that it's a little bit lighter whoops on the tip. like this and just work through and while I'm doing this I can think about the rest I'll leave a space there and um, we've got all this sky now there's a lot we can do with that I'm just trying to think about now un in here I think there is still grass but we haven't got such a defined color um, piece of grass so I'm going to color this still in green but um, use a different shade. So that's my first thought while I'm colouring. Um, I'm thinking still about the sky. Now because I'm going to be drawing the dandelion in white, I need a colour that it's going to show up against. Um, so that's my first sort of thoughts. So. I don't think I could do like a sunset and do red at the top, but I'm not sure it's going to look very summery and spring-like. The colours, you know, sunset colours are a bit more autumnal. I realise that we have sunsets all, time, all year round, but that's just how my brain's thinking. So I think I'm definitely going to go with a blue sky. Now I need a slightly lighter tone of um green which will work with the hookers i'm just having a look at my swatch chart and i'm going to go with the leaf green deep and uh, finish those off with that so we've got um a nice range of blues in this um, set so we can got quite a bit of choice and I think if I just did the sky in one blue colour it might be a little bit boring there's a lot of sky so um, I could do it in pastel because that would be a lot quicker um, so that's another option open to me I've got my pastels in it, my soft pastels here but keeping it within the circle could be tricky but our flower goes outside of the circle so that's another thing I'm thinking about do I need to extend my background outside of this circle so that this bit still looks the white on that still shows up or do I not need to worry I think it's something that I might not necessarily be able to make the decision about until I've done a bit more you know until I've actually done that white bit and then I'll be able to see unfortunately once I've done it it'll be really tricky to do a background um, so it's, it's where I get a little bit unstuck because I can't visualize I can't work out whether it's going to work or not so I'm just going to try and not do an outside background and just see how it goes um, what I want now is another green to do oh they're rolling away the um, the bits of grass in the background and I'm thinking the the a darker green would probably be better but I think I use my darkest um, let's have a look yeah um, I might use the oxide of chrome actually where is it there we go it's a bit more of a brownie green but I think it might work if it looks appalling I can go over it anyway so I'm just going to sort of fill in this gap and the idea is to look like the grass is there but it's a little bit further behind the pieces that are more defined so we just put a layer down I'm not worrying too much about shadows and shading 
we've got to put some in because our mouse is behind something. So I'm just sort of filling in the gaps and then I'll have a look and see whether I think it works. I think it is working to be honest. And it looks like because it's a bit brown right, it could be the ground, slightly soily, or it could be grass. I think it's it would be grass really. Uh, yeah, I think that's that. Um, next I need to do, I'm going to do the green stems of the dandelions while I'm working in my greens and thinking about greens. Um, I think I will do them a little bit more bright so they look quite different to the, um, to the grass. So I'm going to start with the Prussian green, that will be my darkest green, I'm just going to give it a sharpen. And I will do that sort of on the outsides, you'll see. So for the leaves, it'll be the sort of base like that. We'll we'll have a lighter colour in a bit. For these darker there, and for the stems, try and do it on the outsides. It's a little tricky on that one because it's quite small. But uh, so try and do the outsides as much as possible. This one is a little easier. Now this bit, I've got to sort of guess where it starts and ends really because we've got the, um, but we could take it quite far up because we're going to do the white with a pen. So um, it's not going to matter too much if we go too far up and we have to go over it. There we go. Now under here it's going to be quite dark it's got this overlap of this bit. And it's a little easier to just put a dark bit on the edges of the stem because it's bigger. Just checking that you can still see. I don't know why I suddenly thought you might have gone out of shot. Now the base is going to be a bit lighter, I think. So I'm just putting a little bit. Now I need a lighter green. Um, I'm thinking, yes, I was thinking the permanent green would work. I've just got to find it. There it is. So here it is, the um, permanent green. And we'll go back to, yeah go back to these and just fill in the gaps really and uh, go through I've just been into town um, buying last minute bits and pieces for college I'd forgotten that my one of my sons uses a planner he needed a new one so grabbed him one of those my other son didn't want one so I didn't worry. Um, I'm going to want to make that a little bit more shady, shadowy. Oh, sorry. So I'm going to use the oxide of chrome that we've used already just to put in some shadow there. There we go. Now, let's do mouse next. I don't normally do her until the end, but I'm going to leave do the um, flowers at the end. So, um, let's start with her, I usually do her main part fur in a darker colour to her um, tummy and face and then do her tail in sort of pink or peach. So let's have a look. Um, in this set we have a lot of reddy browns or grey browns, but I think I'm going to go for the burnt umber actually. Or the main part of her fur. Now I try and do it in the direction that the lines are that she's drawn in. Now I colour her differently every time, I've said this before in a video, because it keeps it interesting for me. Um, I know some people would want to colour her the same every time and that's fine. You know, Do it how you feel comfortable with. I think yeah doing it doing colouring her consistently through the book does make complete sense but it's just I like to but I use different pencils brands of pencils so I can't um, completely um, get the colours identical so I just decide not to worry. Also sometimes the colour scheme I use she looks better in grey and sometimes the colour scheme I use, she looks better in brown. 
so the browns obviously go really nicely with the greens so that's that's um helps me with that decision now i need a lighter brown now our light browns are a little bit yellow really but i'm going to try the terracotta light and see how it comes out on her tummy it's quite reddish and yellowish at the same time sort of orangey <laughs> Orange, <laughs> but uh, I think it's okay. It's just nice to have a slightly different colour. I always leave her eye white. Some people use something called glossy accents to make the eye shiny, which I think is quite cute. Um, I don't have those. It's not something that I really thought that I need, so I haven't worried about it too much. I've just noticed the ears. We need to do her ears. Um, oh, my phone's ringing, bear with me. Right, I am back. I was just going to do the ears, I think, wasn't I? Yes. Um, yeah, it was only a quick phone call. Um, my mum just needed to, me to give her a telephone number and the name of something, a uh, company, that um, it wasn't very exciting. I'm just going to do a few strokes on there to make her ears look a little more furry. And now I need a colour for her inside of her ear, her tail, her hands and her nose. I always do those in the same colour, you don't have to, it's just the way I do it. And I'm thinking something peachy or pinky, um, let's have a look. I think the pink bloom is rather pretty in this set. It might be a little bit too pale, but we'll have a go and see what it um, comes out like. Let's just, now sometimes I do her nose black, but I'm thinking it might look really cute in this sort of pink colour. So that's what I'm going to try. And inside there, look. Like, and then in here. Now I'm thinking about her hat colour while I'm colouring this because we're going to be doing a blue sky. So we don't want a blue hat, but we want something that's going to work together with the colours, the greens and the blues. So I'm thinking purple may work, but it might be a little bit too. I'm going to grab a darker pink. Um, Let's go for the azalea pink. <clears throat> Here we go. And just do a few areas a little bit darker. Um, I'm thinking pink will be too close to this colour on the ear. But I'm pretty sure purple. I think purple is my colour of choice. I'm just doing a few shadows. And the bottom of the tail, I usually do a little bit darker. It would be a little bit more shadowed. It helps make it look a little bit more rounded, which is always fun. Now, if you don't have a white pen at this stage, you could always do yellow. Because the dandelion flower, when it's in bloom, is yellow. You could almost sort of just pretend. Or leave it black. You know, there are different options. The other option is to leave a white paper, um, leave this white from the white paper and all this. I'm going to colour all over it and then add in white after, so I'm going to do it a little bit differently. Um, let's do a hat. Um, we've got a lovely um, set of purples in this set. I'm going to use the heather purple first, which is the darkest. Unfortunately, they don't have the um, purple lake, which is my favourite castle purple. And I'm going to use it down here and then lighter towards the top of the hat like that because it would be more shadowed underneath. Now down here it's going to be really dark. We've got this cross hat. I'm going to put it on fairly dark by just layering it up a bit. But if it's not quite dark enough I can add another colour. Let's see how it goes. Depends how much I layer this up. I'm going to put it on lightly up here and then um, just work it out really. I want there to be some contrast between how dark it is here and how light it is here. So I'm going to add on more layers. So I hope everyone's well. I received this book, um, it came yesterday, actually Sunday. It's Monday today, this video won't go out today but it will be quite soon. Um, I got it through the post. It was a lovely surprise. On a Sunday, you don't expect to get mail. We, in the UK, we. Someone asked me actually. We get 
that we have Royal Mail who deliver most of our letters and a few parcels. Okay, they used to be um, a government nationalised company, which is why they're called Royal Mail. They're not anymore, they're private. But um, they work uh, Monday to Saturday. And uh, on a Sunday, we wouldn't normally get many deliveries, but Amazon deliver on a Sunday. Um, I'm just looking for a colour to darken the purple. I think I'm going to actually go for black. So this is the ivory black. It is the only black we have. And I'm only going to put it near the edge where it's against the rest of the hat. So the same here, so more here and then a bit less towards the edge, like that. Okay. Now the top of the hat I think is too pale, so I'm, I'm not, it's too much white paper showing through for my liking, so I'm going to pick a lighter um, purple. I think the Purple Lake actually, which strangely in this set is lighter and the heather purple which in the soft touch set it's the other way around so I'm just gonna add a bit of this on just to make it slightly more intense color without making it too dark so anyway yes we get Amazon deliveries on a Sunday so that's all rather nice bonus I was out yesterday um, Sunday and uh, and I came home to this book being on my doormat which was lovely. Now our sky we've got a few blues in this set which are quite good for sky. The cerulean blue middle for me is probably the one that I would use most but I think I'd like a darker and a lighter area of sky so I'm going to use whoops the hmm I'm actually going to use that as my lightest and then the cerulean blue is a bit darker that's the primary blue and actually I can't find the cerulean blue is it <laughs> bear with me I can't find it that's really weird where are you? Oh, there you are. <laughs> so there's the cerulean blue, and there's the primary blue. So those three. Now I'm never sure whether to make it darker at the bottom or at the top. I don't know. So, oops, I'm just going to start with my darkest, which is my primary blue. And actually, I'm going to start at the bottom and uh, just to start colouring. I want it quite intensely dark here and they'll start to fade it a little bit in a minute now I'm not actually going to colour over the um, that I'm going to leave it white and I'm going to start fading now so you see oops that wasn't a very good idea putting less colour here like that so down here again back to quite intense lots of layers and then less as we move up it's a little bit confusing this page because this is sloping so where we where do we sort of start fading our colour do we keep to that slope or do we do it that way and I would try and do it that way so I'm going to take this intense colour here quite a bit higher than on this side so that it lines up to about here yeah so I have a longer area of this colour so I'm trying to think where I'm going to fade it a little bit higher up and then start to fade it there it's roughly even. I could do the bit here too, right? Like. There we go, that's better. And then a bit more intense down here because this is going to be our only layer of blue down here at the bottom, so I'm just making sure that it's layered up. Now we need to make sure 
that we have a thick layer of blue on the page because when we draw on with our white pen it won't show up if we've got a lot of white so here where it's light thin layer that wouldn't really show up a white pen very well but that's fine because we're going to add another color on top in a minute okay so i think that'll do it's a fairly straight line ish yeah so that's the primary blue and i'm going to switch to the cerulean blue and i'm going to start where i started to fade the primary blue and take it start taking it up any areas that look a little bit thin go over and try to keep it fairly layered up for a while. I know we're going over this, that's fine. We'll um, deal with all that in a minute. So I'm keeping it thick. So it's Monday today, I think um, some schools are back today, end of the summer holidays. I think quite a few might have an inset day. Now an inset day, and I'm going to light loose, loosen light here. An inset day is a day where the teachers can do some training or just sort of get up to scratch with what's going on before they um, sort of get back into the swing of things, I guess. Um, so they're busy. I mean, not that they stop work during the holidays, really, but um, the my my boys' college is back today. The first years are in, um, getting having their induction. So they just sort of have a day in without on their own. Tomorrow, the first years have their first day of lessons, but the second years, which mine are don't go in until Wednesday. They had the timetables this morning. And uh, unfortunately I have no days off, which one of my boys had a whole day off last year. But they have um, Monday afternoons off and uh, Friday morning, Thursday morning I think. No, Mon Monday afternoon. Tuesday morning and Friday morning they have off at home but they have two quite intense days on Wednesday and Thursday where they uh, Wednesday they have a three hour lesson in the morning and then a three hour lesson in the afternoon and Thursday they have a three hour lesson in the morning and two one and a half hour lessons in the afternoon and they're not doing the same subjects but one of their subjects they're in the same class um, the subject they are doing that's the same which is maths and further maths but the rest of them then although they're not doing the same subjects that they just happen to be running at the same time which means they'll get the buses in and out at the same time and things like that it's quite useful for me because um, I'll know that they're both out. It's a bit easier to remember who's doing what and when. Now, with this one, I'm not actually going to colour over it in blue, although we've got a few gaps. No, I'm not going to colour over it in blue. Now, the rest of our background, it looks rather like the sea which is quite interesting. We're going to use the cerulean blue middle to finish all of this and we want it to be a dark layer right to the top. So we're not going to fade it like we have this. We've got to go right through and uh, make sure we've got a nice dark layer. I'm just going back over all the areas that I can see that need um, layering up. Yep, I hope that makes sense. They're not excited about going back, really, unfortunately. But they're um, they're not anxious either. It's just you know they'd rather be at home doing nothing. I think, yeah, I don't blame them. Um, but um, they do find it interesting, and I know they'll come back with stories and fun accounts of things that they've done. So that'll be good. 
so um, I'm sure it'll all uh, fall into place. The only thing is my builders start on the same day that they start, which means I've got to be mega organised on Wednesday morning, get them out the door at 8 o'clock and then get the whole kitchen cleared out, which is going to be exciting. I have to get all the washing up done and... Uh, We've had a plan that we will put the dishwasher on every evening and empty it in the morning so that if the um, if the water goes off or anything it won't be on while the builders are here. It's a bit... Hmm. Anyway, we'll do this side and then we'll work it all out. So yeah, we've got that plan. And uh, we're trying to plan where to put all our... We've got to try and got to make a temporary kitchen upstairs and there's no room <laughs> so we've got to run for a table so, and we'll put things under the table but uh, yeah I'm, it's going to be interesting I was saying to my dad yesterday we visited them which was nice that you know we'll have our bin in our fireplace he was like a bin in your sitting room I was like well yeah and, you know, we've got to put our rubbish somewhere can't um there's nowhere else for it. I suppose I could put it in the hallway, but it's more convenient in the sitting room, really. That's where we'll be producing the rubbish. But uh, anyway, I was going to stand it in my fireplace because it's stone rather than carpet and um, put some newspaper under it just in case there's any sort of spillages. And I've got a, um, a plastic tablecloth which I'm going to put on the floor to uh, protect the carpet so uh, and we've planned a few meal ideas which we're going to try out and see how they go we've got lots of couscous which we can hydrate just with kettle water and it's really nice and uh, we've got ideas for different salady things and so I think we'll be well set I'm just going to make this a bit more ragged on the edge like that and then this one although I said I wasn't going to I think that there's some gaps in it here and here right next thing we're going to do is the center of this I'm going to just erase that actually there now the centers are usually quite gray I'm going to put some gray oh I can sneeze Hang on. Sorry about that. Right. <laughs> Didn't want to hear me sneeze. So I'm going to use the cool grey deep, which is quite a dark grey for this centre part. I'm going to try and make it darker at the bottom than the top. Now we've got these little seeds in it where our... That'll do. Where our each of these has got like a pod... We're going to colour it in grey. I could have left them white and then coloured gr the grey in. I thought it was easier to just colour over them. I think it makes a more even background. And so each of these is going to be a little bit darker in that centre of it. And see what I'm doing. Okay, let's just put there we go. Now for our hang on, I'm just grabbing another grey, yeah. Very light grey. I'm gonna put some light grey lines in here. Trying to decide how dark to make this really. It might be darker near the centre. And these as well. Some grey. Now 
I'm actually going to go in with a darker grey as well. Um, here's this one. This is the um, charcoal grey. I'm just going to shuffle. Pencils rolling everywhere. The um, charcoal grey. That might seem a bit dark, but we're going to go in with a white pen. Now, if you don't have a white pen, you could just have left it without this grey or with this grey. Like that. Um, some on this one too. And then in a minute, we're going to get our white pen. Um, what have I got in here? Probably got a Posca, yeah. Got a Posca. Now, I shook a pen yesterday at my mum's house. It was a paint pen. It was a Spectra Noir metallic colour changing paint pen. I thought, oh, that looks nice. I shook it up. I took the lid off and it splattered pen all over my hand and the paper. So that was fun. <laughs> it was really unexpected. So now it's just a matter of drawing on some white lines. They won't show up that well on here because we've got just grey and white paper. But I think it's quite nice to put some on. You can put a few in there. And then on these, I'm going to put a few in. But they will be... Um, the black I don't want to completely cover the black I think it helps bring attention to it I think having the white just adds a little bit of fluffiness oh, the pen won't stop working there we go the same with this one just a little bit as I say if you haven't got a white you can just leave it I'm doing it and you can't see it because it's on the outside. And what you could do is do a pastel background around the outside of here in, say, blue or something. And then the bits that overlap would show up. But I'm not. Um, I think it's fine without. It's got the black lines overlapping. I think that's enough. Oops, that one was a bit messy. There we go, nearly there. Quite fun, just splatting around. Now what you could do if you want a final fun touch is use some silver pen. I think we'll do that as well, why not? Into it to make it shine. So these are my um, Jelly Roll Metallics. I use these a lot, as you wouldn't know if you watch my videos. Um, and this is the silver, which is number 553. And I'm just gonna add Some lines of silver. Now it may not shine, show up very well, but when you tip it to the light, it will. I think it just adds a little fun, extra fun element. But you don't have to, you know, if you don't have your silver pen, it's fine. I think a little bit of shine is always a bit of fun, and for those bits that overlap the edge it will show up a little more than the white there we go and let me just tip it to the light so that I can see that if it's shining now I can see that um, I included all of them but I don't know how easy it is for you to see I think you can see there there we go so there is our finished um, little chappy um, little girl actually um, with her dandelion clock so that's just an idea of how you can do it some people would layer a lot more white on but I like to leave it um, with 
some black and some grey as well. It's just the way I do it, but you know, it's just an idea. So there we go. So thank you for watching. Um, in the description there will be a link to um, where you can get the book. Um, having done a flip through, I know sometimes um, people want to go and buy it. So you can uh, you can go and have a little look. Um, but, uh, and, oh, and a huge thank you to the um, lovely lady that sent me this book. It's really appreciated. It's, uh, it's a lovely, lovely book. Um, and uh, that's me. But thank you. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. It's evening when this goes out in the UK, but some of you will be a bit earlier. Some of you, you might watch it a bit later. Um, but anyway, um, thank you for watching and happy colouring. <laughs>